Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Dani Pondobela and welcome to my financial education channel. In today's video, I want to be discussing briefly with you three misconceptions that people have about investing in property. So if you are interested in investing in property and you don't want to make stupid mistakes, basically, when you're investing in property, this video is definitely for you. So the first misconception about investing in property is that it will always go up in value, which is not true. Property does not always go up in value, even though we all know it to be that way. Not necessarily. Let me break it down for you, right? Let's say you just bought a house in an upcoming area and you expect there to be a lot of developments in that area. And then those developments do not happen. What do you think is going to happen to the property prices in that area? The capital appreciation is definitely not going to be what you expect it to be. And even if things do happen, some sort of developments do happen in that area, there are just so many factors that are outside of your control that can impact the value of your property, such as crime, for example. If there's crime all of a sudden in that area that you people might want to not live there, people might stay away from that area due to the crime in the area. Someone decides to build a strip club, some Someone decides to build some sort of club a pub around the corner from your house that might negatively impact the value of your house because who really wants to live with their family across the road from a club you know so definitely the prices of property are something that is outside of your control which is why i say it is a misconception that property will always increase in value even though in some areas it does like if we have a look at cape town cape town has historically been known to be an area of capital appreciation and that's not something you can still bank on but you can use past trends to predict the future right so there are a lot of factors that do come into play when you are looking at market value of property and all those factors are completely outside of your control the economy right now in south africa people are saying that prices of property in south africa are dropping and they expect it to drop in the next couple of years as well due to this pandemic that we are currently undergoing people are going to be desperate to sell their homes and there's going to be an oversupply of property in the market and then people who are buying will likely be buying at a cheaper well at a, at a bargain let's put it that way let me not say at a cheaper or underpriced uh, price because that would be the current market value at that time so definitely don't bank on capital appreciation when you are purchasing a property because it is something that is outside of your control, as I've mentioned, and you cannot control it. You know, you cannot control it. And even though um, it is a nice thing to have, but always treat capital appreciation as a bonus and treat cash flow, positive cash flow as king. That's how I would approach it. The second misconception that people have about property is that you'll always make money when you invest in property. And I believe that this is not true because if you don't do your proper due diligence, which is understanding the markets you're working in, understanding the area, the average rentals, the type of tenants that are in that area, if you don't understand holistically the property area in which you are investing in or areas that if there's many different areas you're investing in, then the potential for you to make mistakes, stupid mistakes, is very, very big. You won't always make money because if you haven't done your proper due diligence, you might think you're going to get 6,000 rands rent. Then you find out that, hey, in this area, 6,000 rands rent is too much. You need to drop it to 4.5. And then when you drop it to 4.5, does then that cover all your expenses? And if the answer is no, then do you see that you've made a bad investment? And you can't just be banking on capital appreciation, as I mentioned before, to say, okay, at least my property will go up over time in value. No, don't bank on that because that is not a guarantee. Anything, absolutely anything can happen in the next 5, 10, 20 years. But property is a long-term investment. So you definitely can't bank on capital appreciation, which means that if your rentals aren't sufficient to cover your expenses, then you're clearly making a bad investment in my opinion some people might disagree with that and you're more than welcome to disagree with me hit me up in the comments below if you do disagree with this uh, line of thinking i'm more than welcome to engage in such topics uh hit, actually while you added might as well subscribe and like this video if you are enjoying the content that i am putting out there um so lastly the last thing i believe that property well a misconception in property is that you need a lot of money to start this is absolutely not true. 
And I am living proof and living evidence of that. There's so many people who've started out in property without a lot of money. You don't need hundreds of thousands of rands to start out in property. I say this because there are different investing strategies that you can invest in. I have a video posted on my YouTube channel on how to invest in property without having any money. So if you are interested in that also, check it out. It's under the property investing tab. It's called investing with no money in property, right? So there are many different strategies that you can implement in property. That's just one of them that I explain in that video. The most important step though first is to invest in yourself so that you can understand and have the knowledge and once you have the knowledge on how to do something, then you'll be able to actually do it because it doesn't help to say, I'll wait until I have hundreds of thousands of rands because it does help to have money in property so that you can grow your portfolio. But if you're in a position where you don't and you just want to start out and you're starting out, do not feel pressured by thinking property investors are people like Robert Kiyosaki and the likes they yes they are property investors but that's not the only type of property investor you can start out by just one property deal one property deal and after having one having done one property deal then you move on to the next one and you grow slowly and you build from there that's the only way that's the best way i believe actually is to start out in property starting out having not much so that you actually fully understand how to make money from not much and then you won't ne you'll never be in a position where you're desperate for funding and you feel like you oh, need funding to build my business to grow my business you'll never feel that way personally i don't feel like i need someone's money to like i don't need someone's money obviously if someone wanted to give me some money to grow my company i would take it but it's not a need it's not an absolute need i don't see the need for me to go out there and try to look for investors and find uh property investors and all of that i'm not at that stage where i'm trying to I'm trying to exponentially grow my business but what i can say is that starting out in property not having a lot of money is possible i've done it myself i know people who have done it who flipped deals and um even right now i have mentees and men mentees that i'm teaching on how to do this and if you are interested actually in my coaching and mentoring program hit me up in my email i'll leave my email in the description below hit me up on my website and you can actually check out what the the details of my coaching program do provide so that you have a holistic view of what you'll be getting there is a lot of things that you need to learn in property and sometimes having a mentor or some sort of guidance is 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 actually invaluable because you'll you'll avoid making stupid mistakes and you'll always be guided and hopefully into the right path, right? That's what I intend to do with all my mentees. Hit me up if you are interested anyway. Moving back to investing in property without having a lot of money. The first step, as I mentioned, is to invest in yourself. After that, you will have the knowledge, you will have the know-how in terms of how to invest. Invest in mentorship, invest in books, and lastly, actually implement. Without the implementation of all the things you've learned, you're not going to make money. It's not the easiest because it's not meant to be easy. If it was easy, then everyone would be doing it. But it's not particularly easy. But does it? so does it require effort? Yes, it does require effort. You'll be running a business. There is no business that does not require effort on your behalf. You just need to be smart about it and be as efficient as possible. That's where mentorship does come in handy because then... They, you can fast track your progress basically let me put it to you that way anyway that brings me to the end of today's video if you do enjoy the content that i'm putting out hit a like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you guys on my next video cheers